Welcome. Today we're going to fix a fuel line leak on my 88 F-150 with a 4.9 five-speed transmission. Not that any of that really matters. The leak is on a line on top of the tank. I'm not exactly sure what's leaking. I had that. And wouldn't you know it, fuel tank is 100% full because I filled it up last time I drove the truck. And it has sat here since. I went to start it the other day and dumped fuel out all over the ground. So let's see what we can do. All right, so we're gonna take the uh, adapter I made for my transmission jack and lower this fuel tank. You can see we got two tank straps. There's the stud and nut for one of them. The stud and nut for the other one over there. Uh, and the other side just kind of hooks in. Something is broke. So that fuel pump runs, it dumps fuel all over the ground. All right. Let's go ahead and get some uh, penetrating oil. Start by spraying that one right there. Might be running out. Let that soak for a little bit. Oh, that drive shaft's frying away a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and raise this jack up to support that tank. Take this out of here. I can write it faster by hand. Okay, I got just a little bit of pressure on the tank. I'm gonna take Having a little bit of a cheater on here. Gosh dang. I think we'll make this work. Exhaust is right in my way. Oh, that nut broke loose, it's not twisting that slit off. It is spinning, but I think it's a bolt, actually. Maybe not, might just be a stud. I can see something at the head up there that wants to spin once in a while. Probably have to grab something to hold that to pick this back up. Try to keep moving. Yeah, that one's worked loose. Let's get the other side. So much for us, it's hard finding a spot to uh, catch my magnetic light. Darn Fords. I'm just kidding. It's an 88. It was overwhelming to begin with. But I like this old truck. Wouldn't be doing this if I didn't. I 
swear they purposely designed jack handles for this. Sorry, I bumped you there a little bit. All right, I'm just gonna try to take the impact now so I can run those off. Get this guy in there. And we're spinning that one. Something about that. It's definitely a bolt head. So let me just find a wrench to put on there. Uh, 14 fits loose. Looks like I'm gonna need a 13. Yep. 13 it is. Just gonna slowly bleed it down. Okay, the back strap's free. This front one's holding pretty tight. I'm gonna grab a pry bar and see if I can get that front strap to let go. Get that over. There we go. We're 100% supported. On our transmission jack with that tank adapter we built in the previous video. I'm gonna make these two separate videos, I think. Let's go ahead and lower this guy down a little bit. Oh, whoops. Tell you what I forgot to do. So I can level this tank out a little bit. Hopefully you can see that. Man, using a transmission jack for this is awesome. I'll never do one without it again. Our uh, fuel filler neck is still attached on the other side. So let me level this out. And then we'll have it totally loose. We can lower it down a little more. Hopefully I didn't tear up the fuel, the filler neck. Pull that filler neck off the tank. Right there, if you can see that. I should have brought a flashlight over with me, but I didn't. I think we can get to it and get that off of there. Okay. You can see we got that guy plenty, well, I don't know if you can see or not, but it's plenty loose now. Just don't know if I got room yet to... to get that off of there. Filler next loose. I'm gonna go ahead and roll this tank towards the uphill just slightly. Cause we are really on a slant here. It could be any of those plastic lines over there. It could be that quick connect. Either one of those quick connects. Might just have to mount you up somewhere in here and kick the key on for a second. See where it spews the fuel out at. As much as I hate to do that. I don't 
don't know though. I think we're gonna do it. I think we're gonna leave you in place and go ahead and cycle the key and hopefully we can catch it on camera. And then I'll be able to fix it. All right, here goes nothing. Did you guys see anything leaking? Looks like I might have to watch the camera to figure out which line that is. Looks like it's going to be one of those plastic lines. Run from the tank up to the uh, fuel filter. With quick necks on it. Cycle it one more time. Hopefully we caught something there. Let's change the battery out in this camera and watch the video. So I'm gonna take this straight screwdriver and get this retaining clip out of there. If I can. I know I can't really see squat here. So I got it started though. Okay, got the clip loose. You see that? Won't be needing that. Go ahead and pull this fuel line off. Already pretty well drained. Hopefully that's a clean cut. Side looks oh, it looks pretty good. Okay, so this is what we've got. There's our brake right there. Hopefully you can see that. So as you saw previously in the video, um, it's right around that 90 on that larger line, the 3 8 line, where that hole is, that leak is. So this is what we're going to use. Yep, this says Chrysler GM. Dorman discontinued um, the specific part number for Ford. Um, but this does fit. I'm a sure dash zero five nine. It's a three eighths with the 90 fitting um, If you look at the Dorman help um, Ford part that they have now it's two straight connectors and straight lines and since I'm broke right on the 90 um, I had to come up with a way to, to make that 90 So this has the 90 degree fitting and then a piece of tubing and so the way this stuff works um, This is new to me first of all, so I read the instructions um, it says to put the tubing in hot water for 10 minutes to heat it up and then you shove in that barb fitting and then as it cools down it makes a tight seal on that barb fitting I was curious because uh, I'd read you're supposed to heat it up and shove the barb fitting out together in there but I wasn't sure how to go about heating it up and being since the line we're going to connect to is full of fuel or has fuel residue in it um, I was a little nervous about that, but hot water I guess will work. So we're going to give this a shot, see how it turns out. This guy's going to go in here somewhere. So I think I'm going to add just a little extra to this before I cut it off. Maybe I'll cut it right there. Then I'll heat this piece up. Put it in this and it'll be ready to go. All I have to do is heat up the existing line and push it together. And that'll be just slightly longer than the original piece we cut out. 
to allow room for movement. I'll be honest with you, I'm not super thrilled with this idea of splicing into this stuff. Um, but the search I did online, I didn't really come up with a, a lot of better options. So that's what we're going to try. If it doesn't work, I'll let you know. So as you can see, we're at the kitchen sink. I'm going to run some water, let it get warm, and we'll warm this piece up and see if we can get this to slip on its barb fitting and see if this is hot enough or if we got to do something different. Here we go. Some warm. Let's go ahead and heat this up. And I'll leave this recording so you can see in real time how long it takes to get it hot. Obviously under the truck we're going to do something different. Might have to uh, uh, warm some water up in the microwave or something and then so we can hold a cup up under there to get the existing fuel line into it. We'll see. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and try it. Nope, not there yet. Getting there. I think the water is warmer, this would be easier. I think it says let's soak for 10 minutes, but I'm not gonna do this for 10 minutes. Almost there. It's gonna suck doing this underneath the truck. Just saying. Well, it's on there, but I'm afraid I created a weak point. When I was pushing this down, it folded over and kinked a little bit. Um, hopefully, that's not an issue in the future, but we're gonna roll with it and see what happens. Should have probably put gloves on. Would have been a good idea because this cup's freaking hot. And don't worry, I'm not going to save this cup. If you cared at all, I'm going to throw that thing away. Not a big fan of it anyway because you put hot coffee in it and it burns your hand. Because there's no insulation value in this thin plastic anyway. I'm going to grab my heat gun and extension cord. Uh, I, I don't like doing it this way, but I think we're going to have to. What? Yeah. 
If somebody knows of a good solution to replace um, both of these fuel lines from the tank to this fuel filter assembly on the frame up here, um, I don't know, like a braided solution maybe. You can't hard line it because it's got to have some give to it. Um, so braided would be good. I'm sure you could use like an inje fuel injection rated rubber hose, but you got to get back to these quick connect fittings. If you wanted to, I don't know. I'm sure some of you guys have done this already and have an idea what I'm talking about. So uh, comment below. Leave me some suggestions. I'd like to uh, like to know a better way of doing this because I don't like this stuff at all, not one bit. There we go, you have connection. What do you think, does it look, does it look halfway decent? Look like it might work? We're gonna find out, we'll cycle the key a few times and see if it blows that hose off of there. You see any leaks? I cycled the key about five times. Or, yeah, I think it was about five times. I'm sure you could hear the pump whining. I don't see anything leaking. I don't smell any fresh gas. So I think what I'm going to do is go around and, and put that uh, filler hose back on. I might have to jack the tank up a little bit before I do that. Put that filler neck back on and then we'll go ahead and get this tank mounted back in place. And we'll roll with it. Get that hose clamp up out of the way. Take up a little bit higher, give me help, hopefully. There we go. I think that's enough. I can get the uh, nut started on there.
Yeah, I'm bombed out. Drop our transmission jack the rest of the way. Set that back level again. Okay, I think we clean up and we're done here. That uh, tank adapter came out pretty, uh, I don't know, it was pretty handy. That worked out really well, I think. Uh, I'm disappointed that I can't drop the tank low enough to get the tank out from underneath the truck, but I should have should have seen that one coming. I think if you put the truck up on jack stands or on ramps or something, just support it really well, up a little higher off the ground, uh, another like six inches or so, and it should work out all right. You should be able to get it out from under the underneath the truck. Yeah. Uh, if there's anything in your in my video that you liked, found helpful. Hit that like button, subscribe, uh, comment below if you have any uh, comment below if you have any tips or better ideas on how to go about making this repair, or if you know of a system to uh, totally replace these plastic fuel lines between the tank and that fuel filter assembly that's mounted on the frame. I'm all ears. I'm open to suggestions. Thanks for watching.